I've been experimenting with the computer since 1965, trying to figure out a way how to use this machine. I frankly don't understand it, and I'm trying to understand it. Uh, I'm an artist who started out as a painter and got interested in filmmaking and realized that the computer, like a new tool, is there for the artist to use. There's a lot of difficulties about this thing. It's a man-machine relationship involving new languages, new structures of thought, and a new approach. What does the artist do to a machine? Can I consider this like an amplifier and I'm a record of which is being played through an amplifier so my thoughts can be magnified or in a sense refined? Uh, I sort of joke about it because uh, by irony there's a, there's a hammer lying here. Suppose we consider the computer a tool very much like the hammer, only we don't know what to make with it or what to do with it. So for the last two years, I've been here at MIT as an as a, uh, artist fellow at the Center for Advanced Visual Studies. And the attitude I've had is to explore what these new technologies mean to us. I believe that there's an enormously important future in the development of new communication systems that artists, literally all around the world, will try to deal with. I'd like to show you an example of this system. I'm sitting in front of, an, of a tablet, an electronic tablet with an electronic stylus and I can draw into the system. The computer will memorize my drawing and play it back for me in almost the same manner in which I drew it. The whole idea here is this now can be stored, modified, the drawing changed considerably by my examining it and playing into the keyboard, which is below me here. And I can then put this onto film. In many ways, it's a sense, a kind of electronic computer finger painting. Let me show you something. Jim Taggart is my programmer friend here who's been essentially responsible for the program I'm using. One of the new aspects of the problems of communication with a machine is that you begin to get into a new teamwork relationship. As a painter, I always worked in a sort of privacy of my own studio. And what I've discovered over the last two years is that I have become, since an itinerant uh, technological fruit picker. <laughs> I, I mean, I joke about it. I call, I'm called like a film plucker in a sense. It's a funny idea, but the, the technology exists in our society now in many, many places. And it's a transient sense. I mean, I can come to the machine or the machine can come to me. For instance, much of this can be sent over a regular telephone, over, a, over a systems like this. I just break my connections here to uh, my, I hope this is not our data link. This is not our data link, right? <laughs> okay. But we send these kind of ideas over telephones and intercommunicate now in entirely new ways. Because I'm not locked in my studio with a paintbrush. I'm now confronting an entire electronic matrix and generally, this matrix involves lots of cooperation with machines and with other people. And I think that that's one of the important breakthroughs about the idea of computer, computer communication. Jim, let's get into this program and show how it's, uh, how it's put together. I forgot, did you, you don't have a title on this. We're just sort of... Not for this piece of it, no. Right. Generally, they have a, a name for a, a, a program and some kind of categorization of the name. We're calling this layers simply because we can store lots of drawings one behind each other and bring them back at our disposal. Um, what should we get into? Should we just run some of this stuff? Well, why don't I play back some of that stuff you just drew in? Okay. All right, I'll clear the screen first. I hope. Ah. Okay, here comes back the, the first drawing that you drew in. You'll notice that because of the uh, way in which this uh, data tablet operates. The, the data comes back at exactly the same rate that you drew the as that you drew it in. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's stored in the memory at, at the, that physical rate, and all your pauses and all your uncertainties are, are also played back in uh, glorious detail here. Yeah. Right. Actually, we were talking earlier that maybe that there's a system here where you can actually, the amount of pressure you put on the pen will make the line thicker and thinner, so it responds very much like, in a sense, a very plastic system, just like painting. Yes, that, that's one of the things that we desired. This, uh, this ballpoint pen here is, is much better than, than the light pen variety, uh, as far as natural use and that sort of stuff goes. But even so, it, might, it would be nice to be able to simulate a paintbrush or, or a pencil. 
uh, as yeah, I well. I think that's a fascinating idea. <laughs> I'll play the electronic paintbrush. Now, e each one of those drawings, I can change the order in which I play them back, of course. Uh, the order in which they're stored is not uh, fixed as far as playback is We have something like, what, six, I think you said, I had six drawings? I, I think there are, well, there are eight by number, but some of them are, are pieces of drawing. Okay. Let's, let's do the thing where we liter literally bring the, the, the draw by finger. I think that's a All right. really fascinating kind of metaphor about how you relate to this machine. Okay. We'll just put the thing in read mode here and, and we can go ahead. Okay. Now, can you clear it? You can clear it. Now, literally, one aspect of this whole identity with the machine is the complete continuity of circuits. For instance, I can touch the end of this, this stylus with my finger and put it in my pocket so I'm grounded here, and then literally can draw with my other finger. And I'll show that to you just uh, as an example of the metaphysics of, of dealing with the machine. And again, visualize this, if you will, as a kind of an amplifier, the same way you have in your hi-fi set. And I have an idea which has been translated into a program that, in this case, Jim put together, and many other programmers are working in this, uh, in this same kind of a thought, that you can take a program that an artist, or in many ways, just a visual thinker, can come to and deal with it. So now I'm just going to draw with my finger, which, for whatever that kind of nonsensical reason is, is to show you, you know, that it's really literally that responsive to you. Now we can take this image, rotate it by other systems and in other, other, other ways, shrink the drawing, expand the drawing, play it back in all sorts of uh, already pre-coded uh, kind of distortion effects that are part of a program. In this particular case, it isn't part of Jim's program, but just to give you an idea of that, that there is a great deal of uh, really working uh, viability with the machine. Yeah, that's it. There's my drawing. Okay. <laughs> I'm now in the workshop at WGBH, where there's a visual synthesizer, the Peik Abe synthesizer. I've been experimenting here for the last year as an artist in resonance, an artist in television, to see what new imagery can be combined in this electronic process. How can you combine computer imagery and electronic imagery into this new matrix that's, in a sense, uh, a, a very native part of our whole uh, visual culture? Uh, these elements here are used to combine various signals which are electronically generated. It's in a sense a visual plastic process to put images together, take them apart, and control them in a sense by, the, by their own molecular energy. Um, here are examples of how we're, how we're putting this thing together. There's the original source. It's going over here to be added colors to and to be distorted by an interior circuitry. A, an operator, an artist, can sit with the controls at his, at his fingertips and manipulate a whole vast new array of, of highly dense, complex, mandala-like imagery. Uh, is this a new form of visual music? Is this a, fu a new future for uh, and a whole new electronic system? My, inc my inclination personally is that it is. I mean, it obviously implies a kind of new form of visual wallpaper. But what happens after that? Do we find a new identity with a kind of musical en en empathy here? I don't honestly know. My own impression is that it is an extremely important idea. 